Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, this Sunday we focus our attention to our Lord as our loving shepherd. As we have heard in the introduction, Pope Francis would always say this. The shepherd should know his sheep. He should know the smell of his sheep. He doesn't even need to look to find out who it is. It is enough. The sheep comes near and closing your eyes smelling with your nostrils, you would understand who it is. So that is the kind of relationship a shepherd should have. He should know his sheep, every one of his sheep, by name. And the first reading of today begins with a warning, or rather, a curse. It would say, Woe to you, shepherds, who are not tending the sheep properly. You are misleading your sheep. Instead of taking care of the sheep, you are taking care of yourselves. You are procuring money, honor, and posts for yourselves. Instead, you are appointed to look after the sheep. The, main, the sheep is misled. And you are responsible. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, when we speak of the shepherds, first we remember our chief shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is exactly what St. Paul says in his second letter. The shepherd that God has promised in the Old Testament is none other than Jesus Christ himself. Before he came down to the earth, we were divided on basis of color, nationality, language, and people. And there were a lot of barriers. And today, because of his coming, because of his suffering, death, and resurrection, the Paschal mystery, we are one. The barriers are broken. The walls that divide us have been pulled down. And now we are one. We all are united in the name of Christ because he is the chief shepherd. He laid down his life for his sheep that we may be also saved and be resurrected like him. And that is what St. Paul stresses in his letter today. And like Jesus, every priest, every shepherd is called upon to imitate our chief shepherd. And it is not just the priest. Everyone who is entrusted with the care of souls 
the family the parents should know their children thoroughly in the name of freedom there are many who just leave them to themselves and that is how we destroy them in the name of modernity in the name of freedom in the name of individual freedom the parents stop taking care of their children and that is where you should hear the words that we heard in the first reading o oh, to you they are entrusted to your care you are responsible for them and you should know what is the way of the lord and unless you follow the child would never and by example we are called to be good shepherds the shepherds who lead the flock to green pastures the best green pasture that satisfies all hunger is the word of god the sacraments the church and it is the presence of the lord the eucharist and that satisfies really the hunger of every kind in the gospel today we have heard that people were searching for jesus it is not because they have heard so many good things but first of all because they were fed to the full previously and so they had been searching for jesus they were hungry not only for the physical food but also for the spiritual food and that is why jesus says you should never work for perishable food and as soon as he saw that crowd just like a sheep without shepherd he moved to compassion he moved to pity and said well i teach them i shall satisfy their hunger dear brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus as the shepherds every christian is supposed to be exemplary to the sheep that he is ent- that he is entrusted with the parents in the family the officers in the workplace the priests in the church and in many other ways every christian is called upon to imitate christ the good shepherd to lay down his life for saving his sheep dear brothers and sisters coming back to my congregation i am a priest of the society of heralds of good news that was founded in india 34 years ago in 1984 a simple priest from the diocese of eluru initiated and founded this congregation with just mere five priests and two brothers and today after 34 years of its inception we are more than 500 priests working all over the world and i'm glad to say even in united states we are more than 
hundred of us working in the United States. And it's my pleasure to share with you that even me, the provincial superior of uh, this congregation, was sponsored by a family from United States 25 years ago. And they still, still, they still continue to sponsor me, support me. Well, when I say this, the purpose of our congregation is to train and supply wherever there is need, dedicated, hardworking, and missionary priests. And we have our missionaries working in Australia, Africa, Europe, Italy, and India. I myself was a missionary to Tanzania the first five years of my priestly ordination, after my priestly ordination. And it was, of course, a difficult mission, but a satisfying mission to be in the midst of the people less fortunate. And I had the joy of working also in Italy and in India. I'm a priest of 17 years now. And we have several schools. We have our orphanages where we have uh, the houses to take care of the orphans. We send them to schools. We educate them. And we also have mission parishes in different parts of India. Well, with all this, we do not send more than 40% of our priests outside because our motherland, India, as you know, needs to be evangelized more than other parts of the world. So 60% of us remain back in the country and uh, evangelize, do our mission work through our social services, through educating the children, through helping the sick and needy, and through our parish ministry. And to sustain that mission, we have a few missionaries who are working in the United States who contribute uh, part of their salary for our missions. And we also ask for the generous benefactors who could support the formation of our seminarians. We have around uh, 400 seminarians all together. And directly under my care, I have 98 seminarians who are studying to become priests in different stages of formation. So, my request is, uh, please take the brochures that are, that are kept outside and read them, and if you feel inspired to sponsor uh, the seminarians, I would be glad, and uh, you would be donating a missionary priest to the Catholic Church. As you know, the vocations are going down day by day, especially in Europe, and many churches are being closed. And we have a lot of missionaries also working in Europe. Our aim is to train and supply priests wherever there is necessity. Though it is just Three percentage of Christians that exist in India, we are many, comparing to the, uh, the population that we have. In certain parts of uh, India, we have 50 percent of Christians, in some places just 20, in some places very, very 
uh, uh, less percentage. But still we work, we continue to work to evangelize our country while being supported by the generous souls from USA. I would always say proudly, if we are doing our mission work uninterruptedly, it is because of a few Christians who are really generous from the United States. So I thank you for your wholehearted hospi hospitality and love. I have stayed here um, from this Monday, and I would be leaving tomorrow afternoon after the noon mass. I thank uh, the bishop who had given me this opportunity to preach these mission appeals here this, this week, and also the pastor and the assistant pastor for the gym, who was so kind, who had received me here, and all of you, especially those who were with me during this week. So thank you for your hospitality and love. I cherish all the good moments that I have with you, and please continue to support us and pray for us. God bless you.